Hi, I'm Emmanuel, and here are my top tips on drawing a graph. This video will show you how to draw a graph when given data in a table using a mnemonic of Tau Suplum. Firstly, the T stands for title. You need to have a clear and descriptive title that clearly tells your reader about the relationship between two variables so they know what the experiment was. This is placed above the graph. Whilst titles give a general idea about the graph, it is better to use a caption which goes below the graph and provides the full description of the experiment the graph represents. Next, the A is for axes. For this, you need to identify the independent and dependent variables. The independent variable is also known as the control variable and is the one that you change, and the dependent variable is also known as the outcome variable, which is the one that you observe. Usually, but not always, the independent variable is placed on the x or horizontal axis, and the dependent variable is placed on the y or vertical axis. After that, the L stands for labels. You need to label each of your axes with the independent and dependent variable, which you determined in the previous step. You can write out the variable in full and place it directly below the x axis or to the left of the y axis, or use the variable symbol and place it on the far right hand side of the x axis or the top of the y axis. Then S is for scale, which is the uniform or evenly spaced increments along the x and y axes. To ensure that the divisions are even, you should use a ruler. Make sure that your scale allows for your data points to go over at least half of the x axis and half of the y axis. Remember that vector quantities can also have a negative value for position, so you may need to have negative values for y on your graph. It's also really important when doing graphing questions to look at the other parts of the question, especially if they involve extrapolation to ensure that your graph covers the required scale to extrapolate. If you can't extend your line to the range needed to extrapolate, you won't be able to answer the following parts of the question. The U stands for units. We include the symbol of our units in brackets after our labels for our variables so that it is clear to those interpreting the graph how we measured our variables. For example, if we are measuring distance, it could be measured in centimetres with the symbol of CM, metres symbolised by M, or kilometres symbolised by KM, which will each convey very different results, so it is important to that we specify which one we use. We then move on to plotting the points. Each pair of data presented in the table contributes to one point on the Cartesian plane, which are plotted on the scaled axes that we have drawn. In this video, we are going to use crosses to mark the points to minimise error, however you may also see points plotted using dots. It's worth checking with your teacher to see which method they prefer. Sometimes the data provided will have measures for error, as seen by a plus or minus sign next to the data. To graphically represent this, we use error bars, which show how uncertain we are about individual points. After plotting the points, we then draw a line or curve of best fit. Unlike primary school, we aren't joining the dots and no points are more important than others, so don't force the line to go through the first or last point or the origin or any other specific point. A line or curve of best fit should go through the middle of the data with a random scatter above and below the line, and we use this to interpret trends and relationships in the data. Finally, N stands for neat, which means that especially if you are hand drawing your graph, you need to use a sharp pencil to ensure that the graphing is accurate. So that is the tau supplement mnemonic, which you can write alongside your graph to make sure that you have met all the criteria when drawing one.